welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name's McKinley. I have not been on here for a long time, but I want to get back into YouTube and creating more content for you guys. So just comment down below the videos you would like to see next for me. And today what we'll be talking about is my engagement because I am newly engaged. So I was on Instagram the other day and kind of asked what you guys would want to see from me next and I got a lot of suggestions on actually to do my engagement story and I actually got a lot more than I anticipated so I wanted to hop on here and film a video for you guys and to let you know how that whole experience went for me and what went right and what went wrong so if you guys want to hear about my engagement story how it all went down just keep on watching so I'm going to start with giving a backstory on my now fiance and I, how we first met in kind of the last five and a half years of our lives. We met at school at Castleton University where we both went and we got our bachelor's degree. We actually ended up living on the same floor. My freshman year when it was freshman move-in day, my mom was there to move me in and then I met my roommate of course and her parents were there to help her move in. We got to the campus and all of the football team, they were helping all of the freshmen move into their new dorms. And that's what they do every single year. So at that point, Nathan was on the football team. And he wasn't actually helping his own dorm move in, but he went to another dorm to help them move in. So I hadn't seen him initially. So my mom and I and my roommate and her parents were moving in. And then later on that day, we were in the elevator and these two guys actually walk into the elevator and they're kind of in front of us because we were already there and my roommate and I and our parents kind of look at each other and we're like thinking to ourselves they're cute <laughs> and then we all end up getting off that we all get end up getting off at the same floor because we all lived on the same floor and so they had walked away and we all looked at each other and we're like, wow, they were both really handsome. <laughs> it actually ended up being Nathan and his roommate. So that day we didn't really say anything. We said hi to each other, acknowledged each other, and then went about our business. And I didn't really pay much attention because I was all excited about moving in because I was a freshman. So later that day, our parents had left and we were just hanging out in the common room with our new freshman friends and actually some of the sophomores and older classmen that lived on that floor as well. As you were in the common room where the elevator was, you would have to take a left immediately out of the elevator to go straight to Nate's room. We hear the elevator ding and we see Nate's old roommate walk by and I was like thinking to myself, he's really handsome. And then next thing I know, Nate walks by and he waves at everybody like he always waves and he does it to this day. I look at him and he says hi to everyone. We just locked eyes for a second. I was probably thinking irrationally because I was just a little freshman. Then as he walked by and once he left, I said to everyone there, most of the all of them that I didn't even know at that point but I told them all I said and I remember this to this day and I really hope that they remember this too because it's just a moment in my life that I hope I remember because now Nathan and I are engaged but I said to everybody I look at everyone dead in their eyes and I say I'm gonna marry that guy I'm gonna marry him he's gonna be my husband he's gonna be the father of my kids and everyone looked at me like I was crazy some of the upperclassmen that had previously known him said that he had a girlfriend and it's never gonna happen and whatnot and my little heart was a little broken hearing that but I knew that if it was meant to be it was meant to be so I kind of just prayed and hoped we would always pass each other he would be doing homework in the common room or with his door open and so we'd always say hi to each other and be cordial and eventually him and his girlfriend ended up breaking up which I was very happy about one night we were all hanging out actually in my room and I had invited him to come hang out with us and so we were all having a good time and I definitely felt like he was kind of giving me attention so he had actually left the room to go to the bathroom and I don't know if he knows this to be honest but 
all of my friends were like, he's definitely into you. And I was like freaking out and I was like going crazy. And then he walked back into the room. So I had to pretend like I was just calm, relaxed and cool. Later that night, we're all still hanging out and I took his phone and I put my phone number in it and my name. And I didn't tell him I did that. I think he noticed that I took his phone, but he wasn't sure what I actually did with it. So later that night after we all were in our own rooms hanging out, he had texted me. So we were texting back and forth that night. And then we decided we wanted to start hanging out with each other and spending time with each other. We did that and then it ended up just not being the right time for either of us. I had gotten out of a relationship not too long before that and obviously he had just gotten out of a relationship so we both wanted to respect each other and give each other time. Things happened and we were both a little sour about it so we ended up not really talking very much after that and I would text him every now and then because I really knew that I cared for him and that he was unlike any other guy that I had ever met. So I had tried to keep in contact with him and he was still very nice about it. He would text me, but it wasn't like we were both really reaching out to each other. So eventually I said to myself that, you know, I'll just stop texting him. And like I said before, if it's meant to be, it will be. So if I just stop talking to him, if he comes back or if we end up talking again, I know that there's really something there. It had probably been about a week that we had texted back and forth or had texted each other in general. And when I was a freshman, my roommate and I, and even everybody on our floor would keep our doors open just because we would always like to go and see each other, just have an open door policy pretty much. One day I was doing homework and I had music on and I end up hearing this little knock on my door and it startled me because my back was facing the door. So I kind of look and it was Nate. So I was, you know, very surprised that he was there, but I tried to act calm, cool and collected when I saw him and he just was asking how I was and whatnot. And I was really trying to play hard to get because I didn't want him to know how excited I was to actually see him and talk to him. So then we went about our own business. We ended up going to classes and finishing out the day. And then later on, I get a text from him that he wanted to talk to me. So we met up and we talked and we both decided we kind of wanted to pursue each other, but we didn't want to date because we still wanted to get to know each other. It was still the beginning of the year. So we wanted to get to know each other and see how things went. I would always go with him to go get like Chinese at China City and we would go on rides just on the back roads. That's the biggest thing that Nate loved to do was go for just drives wherever and Castleton's the best place to do it because there's all these back roads that are dirt roads that you just never knew existed and to this day he loves to do that and he used to have this green GMC that he loved and if you know Nate you know that's what he had <laughs> and it was a standard so he would drive it and he loved it and he actually taught me how to drive standard on that truck and then some time goes by I end up inviting him to my house, my hometown, where my sister, my mom, and my nephew lived at the time. That was January 31st of 2015. So we spent the day with my nephew and my family, and we ended up going out to dinner that day after we had played all day. And there's this picture that I will never forget, and it's a picture of Colton, my nephew, who is and was, especially at the time, a huge part of my life. And if you know me, you know that's very true. So there's this picture of Colton in the middle of Nathan and I, and Colton is looking at Nathan, Nathan's looking at him, and I'm looking at them, and we're all just smiling, and it's really just the cutest picture ever. I look back at that, and I just remember that day so vividly, and it was just such a good day that it makes me so happy. This is actually the picture that I was just talking about. When we got back from dinner, Nathan and I ended up taking hot tub. And it was the clearest night. We were just kind of looking at the stars and enjoying each other's company. And I was telling him how happy it made me that my nephew loved him and that my mom and my sister loved him. And just, it made me so happy how the day had gone about. And he looked at me, asked me, you know, what would make me really happy? And I said, what? And he said, if you would be my girlfriend. 
So that was January 31st of 2015. So over five years ago at this point, Nathan and I have had an amazing relationship in the past five years. We have grown tremendously as individuals as well as in our own relationship. We have had fights, we have had arguments, we have had disagreements, but you would be crazy to say that if you and your boyfriend or your significant other had never had one of those. I think it's healthy, I think it's normal. I think the biggest thing for us at least is that we are able to communicate and understand each other in those moments and then get past that and learn from it. I really feel like he is my other half. We say the same things all the time. We finish each other's sentences. He is just unlike any other guy that I have ever even spoken to. I remember when we first started dating, I would get frustrated with him because there would be something that would bother me and I have always been a part of bad relationships, so I didn't really know what was healthy. And so I would always get frustrated with him about something that really was my own problem. And he would just let it go and he wouldn't want to fight me on it. He would just say, okay. And I would get even more mad because I'm like, what is this? Like, this isn't normal. Like, you should be, like, trying to start an argument with me. And I always was just so fascinated by the way that he did that but I learned that obviously that's healthy he's you know it was unhealthy what I had experienced before that was definitely a learning curve for me but that also like I said made me so fascinated with him and made me even fall harder and harder in love with him I was first to say I love you I remember we're in my dorm room and we we're both kind of just sitting on my bed and we were both talking and I love you had slipped out of my mouth and my eyes got so wide, his eyes got wide and he didn't say it back actually. And I was like, oh no. But part of me knew that he did and I think like a couple days later he ended up saying it to me and he told me that I did love you at that moment. I loved you before then but I was just scared to say it. So that's just some background on Nathan and I, my engagement. We had never really been on a trip for our anniversary. So Nathan had planned this year to bring us somewhere, but he didn't tell me where. So I was questioning on if this was going to be the weekend that I had hoped for for all these years. In the past year, I probably have thought about getting engaged the most because Nathan and I in one year had moved into an apartment together and also got a puppy together so our relationship has grown so much in a in a year it has evolved and for me it was like why wouldn't we get engaged pretty much at that point every little thing that we did if we went on a hike or if we did something my in the back of my head it was is this going to be the day that he proposes to me so it's been on my mind for a long time like i'm sure it is for a lot of girls but I was appreciative and respectful of his own decision. When he told me that we were going away, I had the thought in my mind that this was going to be the weekend, but I didn't really know exactly when and what and, you know, how it would go about. January 31st of 2020 is our five-year anniversary. I had known that we were going up to Vermont, and that's all I knew. So we we're about to leave our apartment to start our journey upward, the three and a half hour journey to Castleton. He had given me a letter. And so what happened was is that he gave me a total of 11 letters, one of them saying McKinley and then the others were labeled one through 10. So I'm going to read every letter to you in the order that I received them. And every time he gave me a letter, it was a town or a place that held a special memory for him and I. So Nathan is from Connecticut. I'm from Vernon, Vermont. So when he would leave for school and on his way up to school, he would pass my hometown. So that's important to remember. The first letter is McKinley. So remember, we're in the driveway of our apartment about to leave. He gave this to me. I read it in my head. I, of course, got emotional because Nathan is very kind, but sometimes it's hard for him to be romantic fully. So these letters meant so much to me that the whole entire weekend I was a mess about them. 
So this first one says McKinley. The past five years have been unbelievable. Together we have grown in so many ways, from getting Chinese in the green GMC, to working out our differences, to living together in our apartment and taking care of a puppy. I wouldn't change any single moment. To show you my appreciation and love for you, I have planned an adventure for us. So let us begin. Of course, I had gotten emotional. Ethan is the only person probably that can make me cry on a dime in a good way. He can he can make me cry in a good way because I have so much love for him. He makes me feel so many different emotions that him showing me how much he loves me just makes me feel so good and so so loved. More love than I have ever felt in my entire life that it means so much to me that he does so I get very emotional with him. We ended up driving for a little while and then he gives me letter number one. This letter was while we were passing the Vernon exit, so my hometown. We weren't able to actually stop there because we were on a schedule and my mom actually moved from the house that we had always gone to out to an apartment so it was not really necessarily the same as what it would have been but I totally understood it. The letter number one, Vernon, your hometown, teaching you to drive sick in my GMC, asking you to be my girlfriend in the jacuzzi, meeting your mom and the boys, showing me around your town and learning all about you. I love spending time with you and your family at the farm. So the boys were in my black labs that I had had since I was in fifth grade that are now passed. They passed away when I was in college, but they were very important to me. And then we keep driving. Letter number two, Putney. Our new favorite lunch spot in Vermont, Mason loves it too. So Putney, there is the Putney Co-op that I actually have known about for a while, but have never stopped there. And probably in the last year or so, Nathan and I stopped there on our way up to Vermont to see our friends. And it will now be a place that we stop every single time. They have great sandwiches, they have great food, it's a good environment, and it's a great spot to stop from our apartment to Vermont so we've always been doing it and Mason has gone with us the last few times since we've been bringing him up so it's special for all of us now. Letter number three. Lake Raponda. Well what can I say you kicked my butt. That was the best trip ever. I love fishing with you and going on new adventures. Fishing with you in Maine was the best. Backcountry fly fishing, catching monster trout or even little dace. I can't wait for new fishing trips with you. This day we went out a couple years ago, or maybe three years ago at this point, we took the kayaks out to this beautiful lake in Wilmington, Vermont, and it's a beautiful lake. The water's absolutely beautiful. It's really deep, and there's these beautiful houses that are right up on the shore of the lake. And it was a clear, sunny day. I was fishing with power bait, and Nathan the whole time was like, you're not gonna catch anything on that. They're not gonna go after that. So that day, I ended up catching these two huge rainbow trout that were keepers. One of them was 16 inches, and the other was 16 and a half inches. Nathan ended up catching nothing that day, which was ironic because he was telling me I wasn't going to catch anything. But it was a really great experience. I had never caught such big of a fish before. It was my first time and they fought so hard. They both ended up jumping up out of the water when they were hooked onto my line. So it was just really cool, Nathan, being able to watch that and watch me experience that was also really neat. So fishing is very important to us. We fish every chance we get. It's something that we bond over. It's something that's special for us. I've learned a lot from him. He probably hasn't learned so much from me, but it's, I, I absolutely love it. We love it, and it's something that we'll do for the rest of our lives. Letter number four, the Vermont Country Store. When you were at school on my journey to you, I knew there was only an hour and a half to see you after passing this place. The first time we brought Mason to see Josh and Haley, we let him go to the bathroom, and you took him to the water. You fell and got all muddy, but a kiss made it all better under the kissing bridge. We stopped there quite a lot and got little gifts for our family members and stopped there just to stretch our legs a lot of the times. And on this specific day, we were actually coming back from Vermont down to Connecticut. And I remember I was walking Mason and I ended up slipping on um, a hill 
and eating crap and I had a white sweatshirt on so it just made it even funnier at that point but we were both good spirits about it Mason and I and Nathan and it was just a good experience and that's definitely a place that we will always think about. Letter number five, Castleton. The place where it all began. Our first interactions, playing hangman, watching Emperor's New Groove, spending late nights together, throwing snowballs off the balcony, our first kiss, so many more memories. Supporting each other at our games or when we faced each other on the ping pong court. Without you at school, I don't know what I would have done without you. Castleton is clearly very special to us. That's where we met. That's where we spent a lot of our time, just even around that Castleton area. I played softball in college and he played football. If you hear these dogs barking right now, I'm so sorry. Mason and Dawson, you're being rude. Can a lady get some time to herself? I said before, as I was getting these letters, we were passing these places so we actually drove into castleton and we parked where his senior dorm room was which was hoff and right next to hoff is the baseball softball and football field we wanted to walk out to the football field and the whole time when i knew that we were going to castleton i wanted to reach out to my coach he coached me for four years and i really thought it would be special to see him during this weekend and Nate was like, I don't know if we have time. We have to get somewhere at a certain time and whatnot. So I said, okay, that's fine. But we still walked out to the football field. And as we were walking out to the stadium, I hear like gloves and bats. And I said to myself, I really wonder if this could be my softball team because it's a beautiful day out. There is still snow, but most likely not on the turf. And I was like, this will be really interesting. And so we continue to walk and then we get to the top of the stadium and it's my team. It's a lot of the girls that I played with. It's my coach. A lot of the girls, I have no idea who they are, but we ended up walking out there. My coach was all excited. He had no idea, obviously. Any of my softball team sees this, they know how much he loves Nathan. It's ridiculous. He likes to say he likes him more than he likes me, but we all know... He has a special spot in his heart for me. <laughs> but we were able to talk to him, talk to my teammates, and it was really special. And in that moment, I knew that this whole weekend was meant to be and it was going to be very special. Their number six, Pulteney. I brought us here because during the summer of my second year of football, you invited me to watch the fireworks to meet your new friends. That night was perfect getting away from camp, spending it with you. So when he first originally gave me this and we were in Pulteney, I was very confused because if you know Pulteney, you know there's not really much going on there. After reading this, it meant so much to me because that little night that I barely remembered at the time meant so much to him because he was in camp and for the football team, they go back to school early during the summer to do two-a-days, run camp, and do everything they have to do to prepare for the season. And I had moved in early because I had my apartment, so I wanted to be on my own. He was having a hard time. The fact that this moment meant so much to him means the world to me at this point. This was a really cool letter that I got. That was the whole entire first day of our trip. After he had given me this, we ended up going to an Airbnb in Pulteney. We were able to meet the homeowners and it was this little apartment and we ended up going out to our old favorite restaurant in Castleton, which was the Iron Lantern. We both ended up getting something that we always used to get together and we just had a really fantastic night. They didn't have a TV at the Airbnb, which I actually really liked. So when we got back from dinner, we put together a puzzle and we found this journal and the journal was for the people who had stayed at the Airbnb. We were able to read everyone's notes who had previously stayed there. And then that next morning, we, before we left, we had written in it in our own little page. So it was really cool to stay there and we're definitely gonna go back there, maybe on our anniversary or whenever we wanna stay back up there. It was really worth it. This is day two. 
So we get up, we ended up getting to go breakfast at a spot that we used to go to a lot, Sunrise Restaurant in Castleton. That morning we ended up driving around kind of on the old dirt roads that we used to drive on during school. I end up getting my next letter, letter number seven. And this one's very special to me, Pond Hill Ranch. My first lesson to become a cowboy. Experiencing those adventures with you, watching the champion ride again, is something I'll never forget. Thank you for sharing your passion about riding in the rodeo. Plus the Big E, you were so excited in the arena. On Hill Ranch was very important to us because we actually ended up taking a horsemanship class there. And if you don't know me, I used to ride horses competitively. At age 11, I was a regional champion and I qualified twice for worlds. So I had grown up riding horses my entire life and when I was going into seventh grade my parents got divorced so at that point we could not afford to have me keep on doing that. I have not rode competitively since I was going into seventh grade. So Nathan has always known that horseback riding and horses are very important to me and they hold a special place in my heart. So the fact that he did the horsemanship class with me was absolutely amazing. We also had gone to Pond Hill Ranch because they always held rodeos every week. So we would go there, we sometimes went with my roommates or we just went together and it was just really sweet and Nate has always wanted to be a cowboy. <laughs> um, he has cowboy boots and whatnot so I was actually very nervous to watch him ride because for men you're either really good or you're terrible and I had my first lesson with Nathan I was praying I was praying to God that he would not look silly on a horse because sometimes when guys ride horses their legs stick straight out and they don't actually bend and it's just really funny to watch so we go there for our first lesson and he gets up on the horse and he looks like a true cowboy. He did really well and I was really impressed with him. So at this point we were driving back through Castleton towards exit 5 if you know where that is and going to get back onto the highway. And so here he ended up giving me letter number 8 and this says Mount Zion. Our favorite hiking spot beautiful views no matter where you look, finding porcupines, hanging out at Zen Garden, having picnics on the summit, taking rests, and meeting new friends. So Zen Garden, if you go to Castleton, you know exactly where that is. It's this little spot that these people keep up with and there's a pond, there's a waterfall, they have seating and you can also climb up to the summit that way and there's hiking trails all around it's really just a nice getaway from school but it's also a beautiful place and we actually went there a lot and had a lot of picnics and we actually years ago hiked up it i think it was my sophomore year it might have been my freshman year we hiked up and at the summit there were picnic tables and we had engraved our initials into one of the picnic tables and then probably a year or two ago we went back there and we could barely see our initials but we could so we re-engraved them and it was really neat to go and see them again. So at that point we started to get back onto the highway and we ended up driving back towards Rutland and through Rutland and I was really confused at why we we're going through Rutland the way we were. So I really had no idea where we were going next, but this is where he gave me letter number nine, Rutland. Although Rut Vegas isn't the best, we made it for what we could. Trying sushi was quite the experience, but I'm glad for it is now a part of my diet and something we share together. Getting to know our Mexican waiter at East Asian or dining and dashing at Tokyo House, we always kept it interesting. I've always remembered that time at Ramonto's when the workers thought we just started dating because of the honeymoon stage, but it was just a normal day for us and we actually had been dating for two years at that point. Another spot we love is the snack bar. I miss getting ice cream with you. I am not going to go into detail about the Tokyo house situation, <laughs> but I'm honestly really surprised that the waiter at East Asian did not know our first names. And I'm actually very disappointed that he did not give us any sort of tip because we were there a lot. <laughs> but Rutland, 
like I said about a few of the other places, if you went to Castleton, Rutland was the place to go. There wasn't things to do ever. So that was letter number nine and we ended up driving. So we were driving and driving and I still had no idea where we were going. This is day two. Eventually I see a sign and I go to Nate and I ask him, are we going to Stowe, Vermont? And he said, yes. He had always talked about wanting to go to Stowe, never had done it but we thought that it would be a really cool experience. Neither of us snow or ski board right now, but just being in that type of environment, we thought it would be really neat. So we get to Stowe, we drive up, we're looking at all the mountains and he tells me to keep going. So I keep driving and we get to the spot where all the gondolas are, where you board the gondolas. And I look at him and I say, are we going on the gondolas? And he said, yes. So the gondolas were important because we had always wanted to do that. We had gone to Billington Mountain a few years ago and we both had said to each other that we wanted to go up in the gondolas during like foliage or even just any time of the year because it would be really scenic. And we ended up never doing it, but we always talked about it. So we are the only people pretty much that are dressed in normal clothing. Everybody else is obviously in ski, snowboard attire. So the way you have to go in, you go in, you go through this little indoor area, you're walking against all the people who are in line around them and then up and then back in and it's just quite comfortable there. So we go and we go to the ticket booth and I guess Nate's original plan was that he wanted to go up in the gondola and go to the restaurant there. And unfortunately, when we had just got there, they had called down the restaurant and said that they couldn't take any more people. They were closing in a half hour and they were at capacity. So we were like, darn. So we looked at each other and then we decided we weren't going to go up. So we walked all the way back to our car, kind of sat in the car, and we both kind of contemplated to each other in our minds if we really wanted to do it. And I had said, well, maybe we can just do it tomorrow because it might be a better day out because it was a little cloudy out that day. And he was like, yeah, maybe. We kind of think about it, ponder about it. And then he just goes to me and he says, let's just do it. Let's do it. Let's just go up for the ride. And I was like, eh, I don't really know. And he's like, come on, let's just do it. And I said, okay, sure. So for the second time, we walk back over there. We go to the ticket booth. And at the same time, while we we're buying our tickets, there were these two other people that were buying tickets that were in normal attire too. So it made me feel a little bit better about it. <laughs> made me feel like I fit in a little bit more. We buy our tickets. And then we go to the line for the gondola and Nate says that he forgot the last letter. Little did I know that he also forgot the ring in the car. We go back for another time and we go to the car and I kind of just waited at where the walkway started to where the car was because I just was letting him do his own thing. And so he grabbed the letter and the ring. So we get in line to go to the gondola. Nate goes up to the lady that was running the line and asks if we can go into the gondola by ourselves. As most people know, you have to fit the full capacity of people into the gondolas just because there's so many people on there usually. So the lady said no. And then the person that would have gone up with us, he went to the lady, he said, let them go in. It's okay, we got you, we're hooking you up, it's all set, like, you're fine, go in. And Lydia was not really happy about it, but she let us go in by ourselves. So we got the gondola to ourselves. As we were getting into the gondola, the guy that had hooked us up was talking with the lady and the lady was upset. And he said, he's going to propose to her. Will you just leave them alone and let them be happy? <laughs> and I heard it and I look at me and I said, Nate, did you just hear what they just said? And he kind of played it off and pretended like he didn't really hear what I said. So I just kind of played it off. We're sitting on the same seat in the gondola and we're going up and up and up. And we were just talking and, and we were admiring just everything that we we're looking at at that point. And so we got so high that we were pretty much up in the clouds. And he asked me, do you want the last letter? And of course I said yes. Letter number 10. So, dot, 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 to creating new memories. So I read that and I read that out loud. And I fold it up and I put it back into the envelope and I'm just waiting there for him to say something. And we both look at each other and we're smiling and we're kind of laughing and not really saying anything. And so I look at him and I'm like awkward at this point because he hasn't said anything. So I'm just looking at him like, what's up? So he has my hands 
And then he says to me, you know that I want to spend the rest of my life with you. And so we're both emotional. Then he turns and he gets down on his knee. And it was perfect because the way I was sitting was on the bench and I'm short. So the way he was kneeling down, it was perfect height. And then he goes into his pocket. He takes out this little fancy bag and he takes this ring out. And he asked me if I would marry him. And I said, yes, of course I will. So we noticed that the ride was ending. So we both were trying to get our shit together because we had both been crying and we didn't want people to notice that we were crying. So we were hurrying to do that and we're laughing and then the ride came to an end. And for such a long time, I have always wanted to get those chocolate waffles that had chocolate syrup on them. And I had never done it because I don't go onto a mountain very often. So we get off of the gondola, we're at the top of the mountain, and we walk out and we see this little stand that is selling waffles with chocolate sauce on them. So it was perfect, it really was meant to be. So we get one to share and we get hot chocolates for ourselves. And we're able to sit at this table and kind of just look at each other and just be in the moment. Neither of us had service, so we were able to just fully enjoy that moment and ourselves and each other. It was really, really awesome. So after we ended up going into the gift shop and we got two mugs for souvenirs. So we got one that was blue that said so on it and that had moose on the inner lining of it. And we got one that was a picture of a gondola in fall foliage. So that was really neat. So as we made our way down on the gondola, we were able to get service and I was able to call my mom. Nathan had not told my mom about the proposal because she has a tendency to not always keep secrets in. God bless her. But so I called her and she ended up actually being with my aunt. So we were on FaceTime and I had asked her what she was doing and she said just spending some time with Aunt A.B. And I said, well, I have something to show you. And she looked at me and she was like, what is it? <laughs> and so I said, it is. <laughs> so everybody that we FaceTimed, they were all so happy for us and so kind and so supportive. And Nate's parents really did a good job. They had known about it originally. Actually, I ended up finding out later on that the night before our trip, he was over at his parents writing all of these letters, so they were able to help him. So I'm really thankful that they were able to help him with them. So we ended up getting down off the gondola and we go to our resort that we stayed at, which was Snowflake. And we get back there and we start calling everybody, all of our friends, all of our family, just wanting to let them know about the good news. And then we ended up just hanging out for a little while and Nathan had said that we had our reservations. So we get dressed up and we go to dinner and it was such a fancy restaurant. It was the best food I've ever had in my entire life. The service was phenomenal. So at the end of our dinner, they ended up bringing over a little dessert that said congratulations on it. So it was really sweet. The lady at the resort that we stayed at ended up helping Nathan with the reservation because it was a restaurant you don't normally get into or it's very difficult to get into. So that was really neat. Then after dinner, we ended up going back to the resort changed and we ended up going to this bar that was right across the street from our resort so we were able to walk there we ended up having a few beers a few drinks and our server was phenomenal as well he was super nice and loved to talk to us but not too much where it was weird um, but Nathan ended up telling him that we had just gotten engaged and he was like no shit that's so cool and probably two minutes with him leaving the table and us telling him that he came back over and gave us two Jameson shots on the house and it was just a really neat experience so after that we ended up going back to our hotel room and that next morning we ended up going to a little bakery cafe it was really really great they had great coffee they had great little pastries and it was just a really cool experience there and then after that the resort had a hot tub an outdoor hot tub which was really neat because it had snowed the night before so we went in the hot tub that morning after fresh snow 
And then later on that day, we had scheduled a couple's massage. You had a service that was scheduled at the spa. Then you had access to the spa all day. So before we went to the spa, I ended up getting my nails done because I didn't get my nails done ahead of time. Nathan said if he had had that happen, it would be too obvious. We go to the spa and we go into this really cool area where there's these two different types of pools. One had a huge waterfall and one was a salt pool, I think. And then we ended up getting our massages and make our way back from Vermont to Connecticut. And we were able to stop at my mom's apartment and see her and talk to her. And it was the night of the Super Bowl actually. So we had plans to go to our friend's house that night. And so we were quickly able to stop at Nate's parents' house and see them and his friends and family. And then we were able to go see our friends, which was really, really sweet. So my best friend was in on it. Since the start, she told me since October, he had the ring. So he was storing it in um, one of our closets that were down in the garage. And I actually had noticed about the week before we had left for our trip that the door kept on, I kept on noticing that it was open and I didn't understand it. So I would always go and shut it. So it was a good spot, but I think it was really ironic that I kept noticing that the door was open. There's always these experiences that Nathan and I share together that they're always first for us. Like I had never gone on a kayak in the ocean and he had never been. And so we, we experienced that together. We always, always talk about it. So that day, even meant more to me because he had more thought on that specific day too. But February 1st of 2020 is the day that we got engaged and Nathan later told me that he chose the first because that weekend was the best weekend of my entire life. I kept telling Nathan that I wouldn't have wanted to change one single thing about it even us going back and forth at the gondolas and him forgetting the ring and the letter only made it so pure and so true to our lives that it happened and he made me feel so, so special that weekend. I had never felt so loved and so special in my entire life. And he surprised me very much so with his thought and his planning and everything that he had done. And I thank him every day for making me feel so special and having such a perfect, perfect weekend. The only thing I would change about the weekend was it ending. That is my engagement story. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and listening to my engagement story. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you did, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and hopefully I will see you on next video. So this is my ring. Please do not be harsh about my nails. This is a hard time for all of us, but I absolutely love it. It's perfect. He did a beautiful job.